first quarter. What was the approach you were trying to take to set the tone on both ends of the floor? Um, I mean, just take what the defense gives me, and um, you know they were they were all over the place. So you know, just cutting and you know knock down a couple shots, and then on defense, man, just trying to do what I do on that end. I get you know get some def- come up with some deflections, uh, help out it, and you know put some ball pressure on the guys that we guard. Draymond Connor, Letourneau, San Francisco Chronicle. Obviously, Steph had a bunch of threes. But what do you think of everything else he did defensively, passing, rebounding? No, I thought he was really good defensively, and um, you know the, the the rebounding was spectacular. Uh, obviously, we know Steph can pass the ball, um, and he made some great on time, on target passes. But the rebounding was incredible, especially you know that was one of our keys is to rebound the basketball there. You know, with um, Montrez, they're a great offensive rebounding team. Pat Beverly clash, crashed the glass. And um, Steph was matched up on Pat Beverly, and yet, you know, he he got a lot of rebounds. And, um, you know, Pat Beverly had one offensive rebound. So, you know, it was good to see him rebound that way, uh, especially, you know, where they, you know, they really rebounded well in the first half. But, you know, Steph helped out a lot with that. Anthony Slater, Week Athletic. What do you tell Draymond guy, or uh, Demarcus uh, over here? Uh, Demarcus, a guy who his entire life has you know been the center of an offense, whereas today you know they're, they're ignoring him and just kind of the awkwardness at times having to deal with that you know playing that type of way. Uh, to play his game, um, you know, obviously you know you come in with a game plan and you want to stick to that game plan, but at the end of the day he's been as successful as he has because he's played his game. And so uh, I think he just needs to really focus on that. You know, don't worry about all the other stuff or, oh, this is his first playoff game. You know, so that also comes with some jitters and some adjustment. Some adjusting. You know, he's, if you've never been in a playoff game, you've never really truly seen somebody scheme against you, but also your entire team. You know, you, you play somebody in the regular season, and granted, you know, he's been the guy for so long, so he's seen double teams. But in actual, like, in the regular season, you don't really have much time to really focus on a scheme. Um, when you're about to play somebody for a possible with seven games in a row, I think, you know, your whole scheme is locked in and everybody's focused on that. And so, you know, that takes some adjusting. You know, it's... You know, you see some rookies come in and it's their first playoff game. Like, there was no difference tonight between Landry Shaman and DeMarcus. They're, they're both of their first playoff game. And that's it, that, that's kind of what happens. You know, it's the first time you've seen that intensity. You know, it's the first time you've seen that physicality. It's the first time you've seen somebody scheming the way they're doing. So just continue to play his game. And, you know, now he'll know the speed of a playoff game. He'll know the physicality of a playoff game, and he's obviously great enough to make that adjustment. Fourth row, right-hand side. C.J. Peterson, San Francisco Examiner. Draymond, all season, teams have been kind of daring to shoot three-point ball, and it's not happening again early in the first quarter. What do you tell yourself when you see that, and how do you approach yeah, that? Yeah, my shit working now. You know, all season, I really didn't care, uh, but that was, I love this time of year, so <laughs> and my shit work now. So whatever. Front row, left hand side. Jeremiah, you were uh, the first person to come at Kevin. It just seemed like you after the Patrick Beverly, um, I don't know what everyone ejection, and it seemed like you were saying words of encouragement. But what is playing against Patrick Beverly like in a playoff series, and why was it you so amped after that that play? Uh, I mean. You know, there's there's always little games within the game, and so there's always stuff going on out there on the floor. Um, you know, meanwhile, K was eight for sixteen with twenty three points. So, pretty solid night, you know, at the office. So, you know, that was good, and uh, you know, I like to see people battle, and I love that. Third row, left hand side. Dream on. Speaking of scheming, yeah, on what level would you, what are some of the things that you guys would like to uh, work on a little bit more to nail down that game to win? Turn the ball over. Um, me. Uh, well, we, you know, we can really cut back on those turnovers. 
And I think as the game went on, we did a better job with Lou Will. Uh, but early in the game, he kind of got everywhere he wanted to get to. And so, um, you know, we, we once we settled in and really, you know, um, locked in on our defensive game plan, it was a different story. But, you know, we need to be that way from the jump to start game two, and I think we will. Very much, Nick Burdell, ESPN. With all his threes tonight, Steph now has the record for most threes in the postseason. I don't got that. <laughs> still top threes. <laughs> oh, that You've been around him all these times in the postseason. Are you even a little surprised at just how quickly he's attained this record, given the grades that came before him? I mean, I think he's attained a lot of three-point records pretty quickly. Uh, what is he now, third all time? Yeah. Yep. Like, you know, guys played a lot of games, and here he is, third of all time in the middle of his prime. Uh, so, no, I'm, I'm never surprised when it comes to anything with Steph and shooting the basketball. I think, you know, I don't think there's much argument when anyone says he's the greatest shooter of all time. So I, I don't know if you can find many people to argue that. So, no, it don't. It don't shock me. Uh, I mean, it shocked me that I'm not the all-time leading three-point shooter. <laughs> but, uh, it don't shock me that Steph is, though. I mean, you know, that's kind of a double negative, but you get where I'm going with it. Second row, left hand side here. Draymond, uh, Brian Bennett, time he came to yard 680. As a starting lineup, you guys outscored the Clippers' starting lineup by 60 points. What would you say was the key to that tonight, and how can you keep that up the rest of the series? I mean, I think we, you know, we definitely have a great start lineup. Um, you know, we, we expect to outscore, outplay people with our start lineup to, I mean, about 60 points. Can't necessarily say we expected that, but, you know, nonetheless, one, one thing you do know about this team is two of their better players. Um, and some people would probably argue two, two, their best two players are coming off the bench. And, you know, that's obviously been a strength of theirs you know, this entire year is how much production they're getting off the bench. And mainly, you know, from Lou and Montrez. Uh, they're two great players who, you know, come off the bench and wreck havoc. So, I mean, it's not a huge shocker because of the production that they do get from there. But nonetheless, you never really expect to outscore anybody sideline about 60 points. Tom Harris Arthur from Clutch Points. Uh, Draymond, Landry had that game where he had five threes in the first half about a week ago. And since then, you guys threw KD on him and sort of stopped the flow of the offense. How important is stopping Landry in terms of the flow of their offense? Uh, it's very important. You know, Doc um, had JJ ready for a lot of years. And I mean, it was also one of those people, Doc was probably one of the people that helped change JJ's career. And you know, a lot of that is due to the great sets that he draws up, and now he's using Landry the same way. Ironically, Landry got to study J.J. for half a season, and so he's playing just like that, and he can shoot the lights out the ball. Uh, it's important to take a, take a guy like that out. You know, he gets hot, and it changes the whole game. Um, you know, but, you know, we've had a little time to focus on him a little bit, and, uh, you know, he's a part of the scouting report, and, you know, that... When you're part of the scout report, it, you know, it gets a little tougher. Um, nonetheless, you know, we want to try to keep him under control in this series because we really know he can get it going. And if he does, you know, it changes the game, which could possibly change the series. Last one, uh, center, center row. Uh, Grant Cohen, center row, press center, Grant. Montrez Harrell had 26 points on 15 shots. What makes him effective and what do you respect about his game? I respect the guy who get it out the mud, and he's gotten it out the mud. Um, you know, he, no one expected Montreal to be who he is in this league today. Um, and yet, you know, he's put the work in that he's needed to put in, and, and he'll be in this league for a long time. So, uh, more, most importantly, I respect that. Uh, and, you know, he's a, he's a hustle guy. You know, he's getting stuff, you know, dives to the rim. Uh, probably one of the best rollers in the league out of a pick and roll. Um, you know, he's super physical. Uh, he finishes great around the rim. You know, he came up with some awesome offensive rebounds. and. Finishes and even uh, I think one of the things that's overrated, underrated about him is his hands. You know, some of those balls where we should probably be going the other way, he gets his hands on it and, and he's coming out with it. And so I think that's one of the things that not many people really talk about is how you know he has great hands and you know he get near the ball, he usually comes up with it. So uh, you know it was a good night for him. Uh, we got to do a better job on him as the series goes on. Great, thank you. We will have.